Okay. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is John Ortega. Hey, John. How you doing? John is a really great putting coach that I've gone to for a little bit recently. And uh, I wanted to get him on film because the stuff that he teaches is really, really simple and uh, actionable and effective with putting. So tell us just as we're heading towards your studio here, John, like what's like your putting philosophy in general? Like what do you try to get people to do with their putting? Well, first thing I like them to do is realize what they do. Okay. And then let's say if what they're doing isn't ideal, mm -hmm. you know how to adjust it. Okay. So I think knowing your, your, uh, your putting stroke and your tendencies right. is really, really important. And then let's say if you're not putting to your liking, knowing what you need to do to uh, end up in a better place. Okay. So give us a, the quick tour of what you have here. We're going to, I think you're, you're moving soon, but this is pretty amazing what you have already. Yeah, so I've, I'm occupying a space that's about 1,000 yards from where I teach at Costa Mesa Country Club. Okay. So I can come here, measure people, see what they do in a controlled environment, and then go out to the golf course and, you know, get a better idea of what I need to work on okay. over there. So I started out about two months ago in this, or two, two years ago, rather, in this spot. Mm -hmm. um, it's a small little spot. It's about 400 square feet. And I started out with a platform that uh, you're standing on right now, that one, that has my robot on it and then eventually I, I built this one so I'd have two different platforms somebody to warm up one for somebody to warm up there and then this one that's you know where I measure and uh, I also have putters in here for people to experiment with if you right. look over here I've got some oldies and you know some that are newer like here's a, a clay long that's a redo of a response oh, okay yeah, and I've that's got, like as big as the uh, Nicholas driver. Or yeah, the yeah, Nicholas yeah, yeah. Right? So this is this is a Nicholas putter right here. Oh gosh. So, so I'm pretty that good friends huge. with Clay. Someday you might want to talk yeah. to him. He's a great guy. He's a really good player. Here's a putter that I made. It's a answer uh, replica. The it's John a, Ortega special. Yeah. The J two O. J two O. Yeah. Back in the day, with another guy named Byron Morgan, we used to make a, a brand called John Byron. Like here, here's one that was a multi metal putter. Okay, yeah. So that's like aluminum yeah, and like stainless the, uh, back in the day. That was... Forerunner to the Never Compromise. Almost. Yeah, and yeah. oh, here's one. You like this one. High Beam 2. These were made in 1998, the original High Beam. It's somewhere around oh, there. This, cool. is a, this is the second one. But uh, here's, here's the original one. I, got, I bought these both uh, off of eBay in Japan. So you can see that this one, was the High Beam, was invented in 1998, I believe. Show there us some of the tech that you have in here. Oh, okay. So I have uh, Sam Putt Lab. That's what I use and that's what we use today. I have Quintech. Um, I use that for ball roll. Okay. And I, I do have Capto uh, mm. somewhere in, in the cabinet. So I okay. use Capto mostly for outdoors. Right. It's, it's a little it's more really portable. More portable, yeah. We're going to do a putting lesson for me today. We're going to get measured. We've done this before, but uh, uh, so we're going to kind of see how I've changed, if I've changed at all. And then um, we're going to talk just in general also about how you guys can get better at putting. And we're going to start that right now. Okay. It's, it's definitely straight. All right. So okay, we, can, we can lose the flag stick if that's yeah, right? Yeah, we can. Okay, yeah. good. Three, two, one, zero. Boom. Okay, you can push that in. This is about a what? This is 10. It, okay. The thing is, it looks like 15 to 20. Yeah. But it, when you, the first time you hit it, you think it's like six or seven, but it's actually 10. If you take a stamp meter and roll it, it's 10. Mm -hmm. Which, back in the day, when people say, oh man, these greens are tens, that used to be fast. Yeah. Ten, ten is public course normal yeah. now, right? What do you think, when you were like 30, what, what was normal for like a, a, a course that they would have like a tournament on, like Long Beach Open or something like that? What would the stint be? Probably about that, ten. Ten, yeah. nine and a half. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe get it up to ten and a half. I don't think eleven. Mm -hmm. You know, I recently went up, not recently, about a year ago. I don't play very much golf, but I went up with Will Wu to Hacienda Country Club. Oh, yeah. Played golf with he and his brother. And, um, man, those greens were really fast because I'm not used to putting on country club type greens. Uh -huh. And, it, you know, I had level to uphill putts, no problem. I had a couple downhill putts. As soon as I hit them, I knew they were gone. <laughs> like, they were yeah. probably rolling 11 and a half going on 12. And it's... It's, you know, if, if people aren't used to putting on that and you, you get in that situation, there's a little bit of a experience again, but I think those are the easier putts to, uh, or greens to putt on once you're ready to, ready for it. Because mm -hmm. the ball tends to hold its line better. Cause Five more so, right? Yeah. Yeah. So t roughly 10 I get. That's, that's pretty much the 
the number that you need to get some indication. After we look at the report, we can compare it to what it was um, last time you were here. Okay. It's a great thing about these machines, TrackMan. Uh, I don't have a foresight. I'm going to have one pretty soon. But you get this historical record of, right. of what uh, somebody's done. So you can the, see that, that was the carpet. carpet. Yeah, yeah. That, that was. Yeah, it's a little. That little was, trough. I think, my best stroke. Yeah, uh, no, uh, it, it, was uh, it wasn't. wasn't terrible. Actually, that's pretty good. Same thing. Yeah, there's. I got to brush that. There's gotta, a little. I got to do the zamboni. Uh, oh yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, bring out the grounds crew. Yeah. yeah, that affected it a little bit, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, Just good. Didn't get there. All right, let's have a look. Uh, okay, uh, I'd have to compare it. Let me see what your last one was, just for fun. So your last one, your tendency was just under the green. Timing, I think, is good on both of them. So it's you know, 74 there. Here's the comeback. 77, so you got into the green there. Okay. I think the difference is today it seems like you're aiming the putter a little bit better and returning it better. Okay. So you're, you're, you're aiming inside the hole. Uh, one degree, 1 degree, 1.0 is edge of the hole. Right. So you're... you're pretty darn like, accurate with your aim today. Last time I was consistently aiming uh, slightly open, right? Let's see. I think. No, closed. Oh, a little closed, okay. Yeah, but your, your, your return's a little bit better. So both of these are good. And I think last time you were pretty uh, stoked that it showed this, because I think your Quintech report that you saw yeah. The even roll kind of just startled you a little bit. Right. Yeah, so. good, yeah, last time the general pattern was the club head would go outside the line on the way back, and then it would swing left through the, through the ball and it would opening. Like yeah. that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah exactly like that. Yeah, yeah. A 3.2 left path. Mm -hmm. And then this time, let's see if, if it has at all changed. A little bit less. Yeah, 2.3. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And, okay. and that, that, to me... Sometimes the way this machine reports, like this is pretty close to on the line. It's pretty close to coming in on the line. Then it kind of curves left. So it says 2.3 left, and it is left, but I don't think it's like egregiously left. Right, I mean, gotcha. it, You know, for, I, I've had guys in this, this uh, studio that are really good players. A guy that just played in the uh, senior open named John Levitt. You ever heard of yeah, him? Yeah, uh -huh. he works with my friend up in Pasadena. Yeah, area. so John, yeah. John was in here. And his path is way left. He's one of the best putters I've ever seen. Okay. So sometimes you get these uh, reports and you compare it to what they give a grade on, whatever it is, and the person's like a great putter. Okay. So it's so I kind of look at it, you know. Yeah, because I, I, I think when everybody, when these machines first came out, not just putting machines, but TrackMan and everything, the, like getting zeroed out was like the goal of, of everybody. Now they've seen that, no, that's not really how you get better. No. no. Nobody really gets that much better by trying to be zero everything. No, but if uh, th there are certain things that I like to see. Like one of the things yeah. I like to see is, can you hit it straight? Like when we went outdoors, uh, when you were here last time. Yeah. We were hitting 10 foot putts, see if you can hit it straight. How right. many times can you hit it straight on 10 foot putt okay. straight, right? Yeah. So if you can return the putter so that it's you know aimed where it needs to be, that fits with your path, we're in a good spot. So if we look at these singly, see this one, the face is a little bit too left for that path, right? Yes. By the time you hit it. Mm -hmm. And if we go to the, if we go backwards, the, the, this is, uh, now that's first. Okay, so 0 0.3 right, that's pretty good. 0 0.2 left, that's pretty good. 1.1 right, not so good. 0.5 left, good, right? So as long as you can do that, you can put these. And when you say when you say do that, what is it? Get, get the, the face so at an impact that it's aimed at the hole, okay, give or gotcha. take. I oh, like okay. somewhere between 0.5 and 0.7, but even that is an etched in stone because I yeah. have I've have somebody in here that had a one degree to the right path, mm -hmm. and he had such a pronounced left club path, yeah, that he was hitting the ball in the hole every time. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you were just going by, okay, you got to be this to be good. Now, speaking would, generally for people who are watching, what is like the number one thing you end up fixing usually? Like generally, like what is when somebody's struggling with their putting, what is usually the thing that you kind of first go to or you end up seeing a lot? It's mostly the club face. So the club face is the king in this whole thing. But, you know, there are times where, uh, you know, I'll have to work on somebody's uh, launch. Like for you, yeah. your launch, like you have a little bit of a D loft and you rise up a little bit and your predicted launch is, you know, pretty normal. So okay. that, yeah. so I, like I had somebody in here the other day that was driving into the ground. He had five or more degrees forward lean and hit down. Oh, So the ball yeah. was just going, 
Okay. So, so for him, I had to work on his launch. But typically, the place to start is the club face. So somebody can aim it within a degree and a half. You know, so I have. A, now, is this face aim? Is this at impact, right? Th this is at address. See this oh, at face, address. Okay. So face aim at address, 0.5 close, and then you open it up a degree. So at impact, you had 0.5 open. You see, had just a slight left path. Mm -hmm. Now these these people figure you about 0.2 of the path either adds to or subtracts from the alignment of the club face. So, so 0.2 of that's basically 0.3. This math actually worked out. So you have a 0.3 left and a 0.5 right it comes out to 0.2 right, right? Yeah. So I just, I look at oh, this. Oh, so ball direction is the sum of the, the path and the face together. Yeah, yeah. so, so yeah. I, I, I really key on that primarily. But you know, if we're really kind of going deeper, I'll look into the launch to make sure that you know, somebody's hitting it so it comes out of a little nest egg. Uh, so you get a good launch and you know some of the time if the if uh, we have difficulty with this the direction and impact sometimes you can look at the face rotation and somebody might be under or over rotating the face usually it's over rotating the face in your case like a taller individuals somebody over six foot they tend to not rotate the face very much so in this little area between these two lines 10 centimeters before and 10 centimeters after you'll see taller players tend to have lower numbers I have other people in here that aren't particularly tall that these numbers are generally higher, but it isn't always that case. But so, so I like look in at, a uh, in like a ping kind of way, would I be like a strong arc, straight back, straight through, or or a slight, or do you not really go with that? Or? I don't all the way go with that, but if let's say if you were gonna kind of put people in those buckets, yeah, you don't have a whole lot of curve. See mm -hmm. this right here, the path curve, it's it's pretty like middle of the griddle. Okay, so I have people in here. Like, and I'll show somebody real quick, just not to, I'll go bypass a lot of names that if I stopped, I'd be doing name dropping. But right. this, this is a kid that plays at Oregon. His dad played the tour. Well, we like name dropping. That doesn't bother us. We know you're not flossing on it. No, 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 no. You, you, so here's TJ Jenkins. He's uh, Tom Jenkins' son. Okay, yeah. I've heard that so, name. Yeah, so look at this. Look how straight that is. Yeah, straight back, straight through. Yeah, so very, very, wow. like, very mild. And then look, look at the face rotation. He actually has it closed at the top. So this kid, kid was raised on a Pels track. Oh, so that really makes sense. Because to do the Pels track, you would have to under swing a little bit yeah, and then true. and then fan it. Yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. would be this would be straight back, straight through. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of straight in here. It didn't really like his face rotation, but this kid's really good. So this is this is this is actually a pretty good example of the machines sometimes don't like certain things. Right. But look at how consistent he is. Mm -hmm. Now I wasn't there when it was taken, or I don't know if it's a a true report, but there's a Tiger Woods, Sam Putt Lab report floating out there on the internet. Yeah. And they don't like his rotation if it is, in fact, him, because he has a lot of face rotation. So they give him a low score here, the, the rotation rate, like what they consider good. But his consistency, like TJ, is really consistent. Really high. So, yeah. so if you can get people to do consistent movement and you can return to the ball so that the, oops, right, the ball direction is pretty good. So he's, he averaged point one left. Yeah, that's really good. That's, that's an pretty average. Tight. Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> that's average. really good. Now here's where averages are a little bit funky too. Because you see, you can have some of these are over to the left and some are to the right. There aren't really that are any that are like zero right mm -hmm. there, right? Yeah. So left, right, left, right, left, right. I mean, they're within the gray, which means it's in the hole. It shows pretty close to zero. And you can see like if you look at these little hash marks, mm -hmm. There are none that are zero, right? right. So, so you, you gotta know how to read these reports. But right. That's the story. Long story short, we're gonna go back to you. So today, we you know we we saw that your path got a little bit better. You know your your face was aimed a little bit better, but you're pretty good before, and um, your path just improved some. Uh, impact spots that you know I, I don't always put credence on this because some, some people don't put the ball down on the dot. You don't get a good reading right. there, but. Uh, you know, this, all this looks pretty normal. You know, you're consistent there. Uh, I think your dynamics were better last time. That's, okay. that's, that's, that, that page kind of gets weird. But let's see what, how, what your time signature was. There's 722 here. Let's see what that was. Let's see. Yeah, uh, so, so you're pretty consistent that's, with okay. the timing. The length of, yeah, that, that's, okay. that's, that's the, like if you're gonna um, measure how long your backswing took and how long so it took. So the blue long. bar goes to where the average was and then the gray bar is how much variance there was uh the gray bar is uh, like a collection of data over whatever 18 years whatever however oh, long oh that's like. everyone not just yeah me. yeah okay, this gotcha. is this is people that have been measured on tour i think um phil Kenyon uh, was responsible for collecting most of this data so 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 what we're seeing here for you is that you did make a 
improvement because you were you're hoping to improve that because I think like this is that your initial today. yeah like I like my general pattern but I just wanted it less I think last yeah. time it was yeah it was it was, it was going a third more. swinging left quite a bit yeah so, so it was three point two this time it's two point three okay so we're we're we're, uh, we're moving in the right direction for what you want now if we like if we we're gonna I'll just kind of give you an example of somebody that I had in here the other day let me see if I can but this kid had a lot of down. Um, let me see, uh, what's this kid's name? Victor Lee yesterday, just for example. See a lot of D-loft hitting down. They're predicting he's gonna drive it into the ground. Yep. And now how much launch do you need, <laughs> do you think on normal greens to get it out of the divot and rolling correctly? What's a good launch? I would say at least one. I, I, I'm kind of partial to- between At least one degree. One degree. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm partial to between one and a half and three for the greens that we put on, you know, sure. like public courses. Um, if you're playing the tour, I've heard from the Odyssey guys, a lot of guys have one and two degrees on their putter, which would indicate they're after less yeah. because their greens are way more smooth. Okay, we're gonna do a tiny name drop here. Tiny. Okay. Okay. No, so, I like this, this is Darren Clark, so I like this one because his pattern's similar to mine. Okay. In, Point nine. In a way. See that? Look at mm. how consistent that is. Yep. Now this was like for a launch. This is like look at that. Point point four D loft, and if I go across the board, look at this. Look at how consistent that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and look look at his launch, the predicted launch, at about two two something. Right? Yeah, much higher. Yeah. yeah. And and this guy's not bad at golf, right? Yeah. Look at how consistent that is. Yeah, he's made a ton of money. Yeah. But if you look at his timing, you know, if I go across the board, look at how consistent this is too. Pretty consistent most of the time. Gotcha. So, so I just kind of look for consistency, and then I look for things that seem to be out of place. Now, if every once in a while you'll get somebody like this. This guy made millions of dollars on the senior tour. So you got all kinds so this of is greens. The, is this the dad of the this kid? This is the dad. Yeah, that we saw. So, before. so watch this. Tom Jenkins aimed, here. Aimed a little closed. Uh huh. Open it up a ton, but look at how consistent it is. Yeah, tight. Yeah. yeah. Now, now this this is where this is this will illustrate you don't have to have zero to be good at golf because okay. this guy made every putt, and I've seen him putt outdoors. He can putt the lights out. He's amazing. So look at this, five left. <laughs> yeah. Almost that, and then watch watch this this. People that don't like outside in pass will not like the look of that. Yeah. But this guy. If you want to putt him for money, whatever you whatever you have in your pocket, he'll have. This yeah. guy can putt the lights out. So, I'm not. Yeah, it really gave him a red number, a red. But <laughs> yeah. go go back to go back to path. Oh, sorry, d ball direction. Ball direction. Yeah, when you're on. Yeah, it's a point one left as his average. Yeah, and like you said, he's got a lot right there at zero 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 zero. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. got a lot in there. See that? Yeah. He, he just buries all those. So this guy is one of the best putters I've ever seen. So people that are just married to things have to be a certain way. Yep. You see a guy like this, get measured like this, and then you see how he putts outdoors, mm -hmm. it'll change your mind. I'll give a John Levitt in here and then we'll call it a day. This guy can putt. He, he's really good. So he puts up a lot of greens. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of left aimer, opens it up. Now watch the path. Look at that. Yep. Yeah, left, mm -hmm. right? And if you look at where he hits it, mostly in the hole. Yeah. I just wanted to pull up these reports just to show people that it isn't always what you think. And, and so you, you, need to, you need to have somebody direct you that's seen a lot of different things that work. And can and know it, a pattern that will work and will. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. if, if I try to bend somebody too much mm -hmm. and they're already good, I'm not doing them any favors. But if I see something that, like if I see something like this and it doesn't lead to good results, then we start moving it around. <laughs> all right all right john so uh so one thing i want to make clear to people because it can be confusing if like okay there's all these different golfers that have had like really great success that are doing so many different things you can almost have the feeling where like okay well then nothing matters with putting just go out and do what you do but I'm, I'm, that's not right either no to get a little bit more clear on for people that are watching about some t some things that you know Will, uh, work and you know like just won't work like what are some combos that is like if you see that that is a red flag and that's just not gonna work I would say th that are less likely to work because I've yeah. seen some things that shouldn't work that do work okay right 
So less likely to work short backswings, long follow throughs. Okay. Super short backswings and long follow throughs. Uh, back when I was young, um, people would say you'd have to accelerate through the putt. Now the majority of people that I come, they come in here and get measured, they accelerate a little bit through the putt. Mm -hmm. Now I've had some that decelerate a little bit. Uh, apparently Tiger does, Patrick Cantley does. And you can usually see somebody who decelerates or you can it's recognize kind of it. Crashing yeah. into it, yeah. No, there's a, a shorter follow through. Okay, yeah. So like if we put you on here and I just have you take a longer backswing and a shorter follow through. So I think your report's up there. No, it's not, that's John Levitt. Yeah, let's try that. So let's, let's look at John Levitt's just for fun. To sure. see where his follow through was. So th th this kind of fits the, the question, not to uh, sure. mention his name too much, uh, but uh, Tom Jenkins, things that shouldn't work. Let's see if I get the report one. So if you look at his acceleration, see how this is kind of peaks up a lot? It's like yeah. five. So on the Quintech machine, they would just completely take a poop on this. Right, because it's too sudden. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you look, if you look at his graphs, there, there's like a real quick jump at just before impact. See, it's mm -hmm. really kind of ramping up because he takes short backswing. So if you look at his path, if I go back here, the length of his backswings, yes. a lot shorter than his follow through. Sure, that's like. But, but it, it, it's it's sufficiently long to work. So let's say if it was only to right here, and then it went like that, that typically is not a good recipe for lag putting or yeah. when you're nervous. Yeah. Yeah, so, so usually you're going to see something that's a little bit more equal. Oh, There's yeah. longer backswing, shorter follow through. Mm -hmm. See, a little bit of a decelerator. Mm -hmm. But like, but that line, the, the steepness of the line either way is not as much. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, so you yeah. see he's going away with some speed. Mm -hmm. Then he kind of ramps it up. And see, this is impact here. So he's generated a speed right here. The air is going out of the balloon. Mm -hmm. So you'll see this more so. Where, where's the impact? Oh, right these there. Lines those are. lines, yeah. Yeah, so if you look at this, if I put it on this report, see how it's minus? He's yeah. He's decelerating. Okay. Because the backstroke is equal to or longer than the follow-through, typically. You mm. see that? Yep. So, so I'd say the one thing that generally doesn't work really well is a super short backswing. And zippy-zippy. Zippy-zippy yeah. follow-through. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then conversely, really long, and just stopping right it, after. That hardly ever happens. Oh, okay. Now I'll show you one. Uh, <laughs> this is crazy. Now this girl, she she putts okay, but she's a a tour player. And look at this. Oh, okay. S super long backstroke. Yeah. Shorter follow through, and for some reason, somebody told her to hit up on it a lot. Yeah. It's funny yeah. when you went to the other uh, machine, liked her numbers quite a bit. Yeah, but, or, but her. On the her, other part of it. Yeah. Her speed control was not yeah, very good. The, yeah, that is huge. So, see how high the club is up off the ground? So, she's thinning it. Uh, uh, massively. And yeah. so, if, if you look at. Uh, That's why she's hitting up on it so much, but it's only launching 1.5, is because she's hitting it so far on the bottom of the face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then, if you look at the impact spot, uh -huh. see how she's just topping it. Yes. <laughs> so typically you're going to see you know, the, the it'll be right yeah. here or I've seen really good putters hit it higher. Okay. I haven't seen too many hit it low on the face. So trying to create top spin. So this, okay. this was probably an attempt to create top spin. When it, when it comes to getting advice, I think first off, you have to know where you are, sort of, at least have an idea of what you think you do. Mm -hmm. Then go to somebody that's you know, done this for a while. Um, explain what you think you do, what you think you want to do. Right. They 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 uh, watch you. You know whether it's with a machine or not. And mm -hmm. They they see if you're doing what you think you're doing, and if the what you think you want to do isn't a good idea, maybe they'll tell you that it's not a good idea. Yeah. Which I told this girl. And then you kind of go to work. All right. So what do you think I should work on? Like I was telling, I was telling uh, John before that like I feel like I'm a good putter, and I've always. Um, actually for somebody like I give a lot of putting lessons at our golf schools or whatever and you know I helped write a book about putting and everything so but even with all that like I'm sometimes hesitant to get putting advice because Rotel kind of like Bob Rotella says like uh, you know when I read those books like I don't want to do anything at the cost of my confidence you know so that's why I think a lot of people think putting is so mental that oh, I don't want to do too many lessons with it because then I might hear something negative about my putting 
or get a bad idea about my putting and then that will make me make less putts. So what would be a good way, like a positive like way for me to start changing the direction of my putting to get to like another level? When we did a putting game uh, in our last video that you guys won't see, um, <laughs> that where uh, I had a very, very typical miss for when I miss, which is I had like a three and a half footer, easy though, back up the hill, it wasn't, didn't quite put my full focus into it. And then the face kind of hung open on that one. And you notice that like, okay, and that would be kind of like the miss I would want to get rid of. That kind of wipey face stays open and it just feels very lazy through the stroke. I don't know if I feel like, okay, I'm going way too left. So then I gotta, you know, so that if I had like a miss that I'm trying to get rid of, it would be, I lag it pretty good. And then it would be like that three, four footer range where sometimes I'm just like dancing on the right edge of the hole trying to rewind my memory to, to yeah. that, that putt. But I think in general, your, your putting stroke is pretty good. Okay. So first off, I wouldn't do too much, mm -hmm. um, at least so far sure. as, as I'm concerned, mechanically mm -hmm. with your stroke. Because I think, you know, you're, you're, you know you're, the way that you move the putter on your normal putts, are, it, it's pretty good. Yeah. And I think for anybody, this is, I think, good advice for anybody. Um, you got to go out and practice and work on your speed. So I think the best putters are people that have really good control of their speed. And usually that's uh, brought about by hitting a lot of putts and like knowing how far to take the club back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether you have blast motion or if you have a track man or something that will indicate how long you took a backstroke and how long it took you to take your backstroke yeah. and how long it takes you to get in the ball and your time signatures seem to be pretty consistent. Gotcha. Um, being able to do that. Yeah, John has this awesome drill that we'll show uh, in another video when, when we come back, where you take a, you take a couple balls and you, you have the same backswing length with one of your boards, right? Yeah. And then and you hit the ball, and then you just try to make each ball go the same distance for the given back, uh, backswing length. That really shows like another level of consistency that I think a lot of people don't have. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. that that's really important to be able to do that. Yeah. And then, and this isn't anything that I authored or can take credit for, but you hit putts where you try to hit one harder, some of them that's kind of medium speed, one that's die speed. So you start getting a good knack for matching speed and line because that that's going to play into the times where you know the greens might get a little bit more chewed, yeah. and you have to hit it harder to keep the line, or right. you know they're going to dry out because of the heat or mm -hmm. wind, mm -hmm. and so you have to play more break. So I think you need to practice your, you know, your touch and like how your imagination and your touch can kind of blend with each other. Yeah. So the speed and line situation, you know, you become more, more malleable and more um, artistic about how you putt. Right. So I th that, that's where I would see in, in just the time that I've observed you, yeah. the place where you could become better is, is in that area, just mm -hmm. with your speed and your touch and also right. You know, like you said, your confidence. So that one stroke, I'm just trying to remember what it looked like. It was, it looked very tentative. Right. And so when you, when you kind of shut down a little bit, like you tried to guide it. Mm -hmm. So I call it putting versus putting. So putting right. is you're trying to put the club into different places and you're trying to create a really nice stroke. And putting is you just hit the ball. So yeah. I, you know, I've had times where I have putting contests with people and they tell me, oh, your wrist is, you're too wristy with your stroke or, do you even care what your stroke looks like? And most of the time I put pretty well because I don't play much golf anymore. Right. And I usually comment, well, if, would you care what your stroke looked like if you could putt like me? Yeah. So it's like, I don't, I, 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 when I work with kids, I like their strokes to look really clean. Mm -hmm. I like to create Jason Day if I can. Sure. But, you know, I've recognized that there's some people that just don't look great with their putting stroke, but they putt really well. Mm -hmm. So I like, like looking at somebody and saying, okay, I think if I go this way with that person, that's going to behoove them the most, like straighten them out a little bit. If they're young and they're kind of weird across the mm -hmm. ball or whatever it might be, can make it as, as conventional as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I get uh, an established golfer, like let's say we, we were earlier, we were showing Clay Long's uh, putters over there. Okay. Yeah. And he, he's a really good player, but his putting stroke, you know, kind of looks from his era, right? It just yeah. has its own, uh, peculiarities, you know, sure. his, his own idiosyncrasies. And so I'd kind of look at him and I would approach his, his advice or the way I'd advise him different than I would, a you know, 13 year old junior golfer that's been playing for three years. Sure, right? sure. So I think it's individual back to you. I would just work more on just being athletic. You're talking about your son. Sometimes mm -hmm. he's not as athletic when he plays in tournaments mm -hmm. and, and, uh, 
just try to cultivate practice routines and the way of you kind of approaching your putting when you play uh, a competition yep. that would um, allow you to perform better. So it's kind of more performance based sure. than it is technical. So I look sure. at putting as, okay, you have performance and you have technical. Yeah. And you're, you're trying to get the technical solid enough so that when it comes to perform, that's that okay. box already been. So checked. there's like a technical threshold, and if somebody meets that, it's like okay, we don't really need to laser focus on this as much. We can start now doing performance stuff. Yeah, okay. and in, 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 in like if you look at different teachers, some of them are, you know, more adamant about technique, and some of them are more, you know, performance. Like James O, a friend of mine, he's like very performance based. Sure. Yeah. Like you know, he he he. Yeah. doesn't really like scoff said this. a lot of the you know, yeah. he doesn't really like this too much he's mm -hmm. he's lukewarm on this let's say right you know he kind of does he uses his eyes and you know he kind of has his own little sand putt lab in his brain kind of like butch does with looking at golf Full swings swing. yeah he goes i have two track men they're right here mm -hmm. right so so there's that too so i i just i just uh i don't overdo this i think it's important yeah that's why i have it yep. I, w I wouldn't have this i don't have this just for show sure i think it's very important so that's just my my own way of doing it. So I look at this, get a, um, my impression of what this tells me, and then go outside and blend that with your performance. Okay, all right, all right, John. So I want to do a thing here where we I'll hit a few more more putts with this, and then this, and then I want to try maybe one of your putters. Okay. You know, just uh, to see because I haven't always like uh, used an arm lock putter, but when I was on the Quintech machine there, it was like a few percent better. So I said, what the heck, and I and I started using this. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, just to see, like, may, I think that might give me a certain, you know, see equipment-wise if we can maybe make some of those uh, things just a, a little tighter. Okay, All right, so, so make some putts. Just make a couple putts. Uh, and so any any intervention or, ch or changes I should try here? Um, I wouldn't you, suggest it, but if okay. you just wanted to try something on for size, since you liked the path being a little bit straighter, maybe... Maybe try to swing a little bit more to the right, like play a draw. Oh, I got you. All right, so I'm gonna hit hit. Yeah, oh wait, 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 wait! I've got you on Tane Lee. Bit of a baby okay. draw, yeah. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna hit. Now I always like to have my feet feel like a little open, and then my shoulders square. Um, but now that I'm seeing how I take it, this I I'm gonna go still have my feet open, but I'm gonna try in my mind to go about half as much as I as I did. All right. That so should, before that I'd be like that, and now I'm gonna be. Yeah, that, that should move it a little bit to the right. If you just do the same thing. That's this, and then sensible. maybe it's tiny baby draw, just yeah. a little bit here. I feel like you're taking a little bit in. Last time we had you take it in toward that little mm -hmm. um, thingamajig. It felt good. Uh, that was a little bit more left than maybe you want. Okay. So see that line there? See if you can get that uh -huh. in. That, see the dashed line's right on the line? Uh -huh. Maybe take a little bit more in. So usually if I'm going to try to get people to get the path more to the right, yeah. see, see where the arrow is up here? Mm -hmm. I'll have them kind of feel that, like that. Mm -hmm. Just take it take it exaggeratedly in. Yep. And then feel like you're going to hit out to the right. There you go. So you see how you, you felt like you took it way in? But yeah. It's not barely in at all. Okay. Right? right. Gotcha. Yeah. Have you always been left hand low? Yeah, I learned this way. All right. My brother was left hand low, so I just kind of thought that's how you putted. Okay. About the same as before. Okay. I think you'll have to bang on it a lot harder. Exaggerate it even a lot more. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. that was more inside. Yeah. And the machine liked that. That's funny. Yeah. Face wasn't too much better, though. Okay. Because you. you you, it you, closed it. It, you closed it because you were trying to close it. So do the same thing and see if you can uh, return to the ball um, nearly the same as you started. Just take it in and just trust yourself. See what happens. Closed open. One, one more with this, then we'll uh, okay. switch putters and see what, okay. what becomes. Now, you use 35-inch probably. I'm not sure, but it's like there okay, is, well, is where we'll the actual putter would yeah, be. Yeah, we'll measure. I think it's, you know, you, you bend quite a lot from the, the waist. Yeah, and, I and like to be kind of hunched. Yeah, so it's probably more like 34. I think that the clay long 30, 34-ish will be pretty really good. I didn't think about it that time. Okay, let's, so we're going we're to close this out. Okay, so, so now we'll switch putters and try it. This is a, the right attempt. Mm -hmm. I think you, even before that, you were... Just yeah, at least like as good. Draw attempt or something, but that's yeah. the same. Yeah, it was about the same. 
Yeah, so that's that's nice. his. Uh, and this is my hand here, so you can see how big it is. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty sizable. Not too bad. Yeah. Two for two. That's interesting. That's the first one you had open and you closed. Uh, open face closed. I'm sorry. The, the face change was closing. Oh, okay, gotcha. So normally you're kind of closed and opening. Mm -hmm. uh, and not that this is a holy grail, but look at that path. Yeah, yeah. One, two, bad. Tighter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it definitely feels easier to hit a draw without the arm lock. The arm lock is more of a body thing, you know, to me. Yeah. And uh, so. Interesting how this one, like the arm lock prevents you from closing the face more yes. so. Well, you would think, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh -huh. it, it's, it kind of tightens up that element. Yeah. But see how you kind of ha have this one, the face change on this one. The first one I think you open barely and then See, you open the face a little less with this, and then you started closing it. Yeah. So that's that's really interesting. I wouldn't have expected that. Let's try. Can we try this with one of your putters? Because I'm going to see what it looks like on a totally traditional like answer style putter. Sure. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. But this is really good. I, I love the way the insert feels. It's just too big for me. <laughs> it's just so massive. Yeah. Look at well, he, he has that insert in a standard answer style putter too. Huh? Do you think this Odyssey would would fit me that I had? Because this is always the one that I thought I should have. Uh, we Stric try that one. We yeah, let's that. try this one. This Steve Stricker style one. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is this yeah. Uh, just because I like the insert so much, but but more because I when I went down the whole thing when I went down to even roll is I, I was trying to decide on what neck to get, and so I wanted a short slant because mm -hmm. it looks so sexy, mm -hmm. but he said. Uh, a lot of people overclose it with a short slant and it's not for very it's not for a lot of people so it's, i think this with what we're seeing on the machine might actually be a good matchup but yeah. i'm not sure when you're uh working on somebody's putting and uh when do you say like okay let me try a different putter and maybe it's not maybe you'll work better with a different putter like when do you start trying to change the equipment a lot of times i'll see people leave the face too open mm -hmm. and a lot of the modern putters are made with heavier head weights. Gotcha. So I have a couple putters in here that have, you know, let's say instead of 350 gram weight head weights, 330. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And have them try that. Or if they have big grips and they don't close the face enough. So I'll, that's that's kind of the, the go-to play when they have the face too open. Gotcha. I'll, I'll go sometimes face balance, sometimes lighter, and sometimes smaller grips. You're just good. Look at that. Just look at that. Boom. Felt good. Hundred percent. What? Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look. Yeah. Yeah. That's all better. Okay. Can you go to the screen that shows the path across? You know the the lines where you oh, know the, the like Darren Clark. Path? Yeah. Yeah. That one. Okay. So that looks See, that's, better. That's that's the pace. The, I think before you were like I don't know what it was. Maybe higher than two or three. Okay. Left, uh, face the path. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty tidy. That looks yeah, I good. like that because I'm still me, but I'm not just so extreme. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah, you might like that putter. You can trade me for a breakfast burrito. So you already got got me a breakfast burrito. <laughs> yeah. You just haven't eaten it yet. I think I would go. I would maybe put an extender to make it because I feel like really bent over. Like yeah, well, I, I think, think about there would be good. But yeah, that's we okay. could do that. We could do yeah. that. That's but that's a really good putter. Not that particular one, but that model. Mm -hmm. But you aim that pretty well. And you don't open it very much, so you, you're pretty stable with that. That's pretty good, and yeah. the path is as good, if not better. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's filling it's filling enough. Like that's good as anything. That's good. If you can't do your stroke in in a um, consistent enough way, mm -hmm. it's just hard to be um, a good putter because okay. just too many things are happening differently. Gotcha. So it's too chaotic. So there has to be some stability. And so, if, and if somebody said to you, what's the key to being consistent? What would that be? Uh, just demonstrating that you can hit a 10 footer straight mm -hmm. often and that you can um, look at a green and, 
know which way it breaks. Or some people, they, you know, they get it wrong, left yep. to right, and they think it's right to left. Uphill or downhill, they can't do that. So, you know, just yep. being able to, you know, check the boxes of the, you know, the 101 things. And, mm-hmm. and by the way, the best putters are really good, or best golfers are really good at 101. And some of them, mm-hmm. they don't, they, you yeah. Know, if you can. The basics. If, yeah, yeah, if you can do the basics, you know, sometimes when people come, they want to learn something new. It's like, no. We just gotta, we got to do this better. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's like people who sing, they have a certain number of notes that they can sing and they can kind of make it raspy, they can kind of make it pure or whatever. Right. So you have all kinds of things you can do, but it, you got kind of have this area that you work within and yeah. you just try to get better in that area. So we're just okay. doing that basically with golf. You just, right. you know, you have things that you can do and mm-hmm. things that you're prone to do and you just find what those things are right. and you just, you know, embed them in your... And I think like if you have the ability, if you're a a golfer and you have like the space to have some area to practice a 10 foot putt straight, like because that's what something that I've noticed with a lot of really good putters is they spend a lot of time working on the ruler or working on the Pell's thing with just the marbles, you know, Mm -hmm. or just some, they spend a lot of time on just a straight putt, kind of getting that down. You know, at home even, and then um, bringing it to the course. You like people doing that kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes, to be able to hit a straight putt straight. And then when you're at the course, I also like people to work on putts that have very little break. Mm-hmm. So, like, I, you know, I used to digital level a lot of times. I go out and I try to find yeah, something that's, that's under, under 1%. Mm-hmm. So you're just aiming edge of the hole or just a little bit outside the edge. Because I think it's also important for you to know when a putt breaks mildly. Because yeah. if you know what subtle. It, if subtle breaks, because those are the hard ones. Like if you get up to 2%, it's obvious, mm-hmm. right? If it's like one or less, yeah. less so. And so usually they're going to pin holes in less than 2% slope. So I, I like people to get really good at the putts that don't break a ton. Okay, gotcha. You, put, you don't, you don't want to ignore any of them. Mm-hmm. But, you know, inside 10 feet, you want to be better than your competition. Yep. So you don't have to be have faster than the bear, you just have to be faster than your friend. So yeah. you don't have to make every one of them, but just yeah. for each each distance better yeah. than anybody so you play against. A right? little above average. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more about uh, having a golf lesson with John or just talking about putting with him, go to his Instagram page, I think is the best way to con- connect with him, which is, what's your Instagram handle? We'll put <laughs> we'll put it in the description. It's you actually, you'll take a PGA, it. Yeah. I think. Okay. I'm 99 Yeah, sure. so we'll put it in the description of this video and you'll see that. And uh, give him a call and let him know you saw him on Be Better Golf. See you later. Bye.